Let's all stand tonight and go before the Lord with praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Giving God the praise for being in his house tonight. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Lifting up the name of Jesus. Come on, let's all go to the Lord together right now. Precious Heavenly Father, God, how we love you, Lord. How we thank you. Lord, how we magnify you and worship you. Lord, for you and you alone, Lord, are worthy to be praised. Lord, I thank you, God. Hallelujah. I praise your name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, bless your wonderful name. Praise your wonderful name. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn and greet somebody tonight. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's all sing out. Worship God. Let him have his way tonight.
There's times you begin to wonder, hallelujah, but God's never lost a battle, amen, and I know that he never will, praise God. I said he never will, amen. My God is always victorious. Matter of fact, to him, it's really not much a battle, for you see, the victory's already been won. The battle is right here, and the battle is right here, but God holds the victory, hallelujah, and he's never failed, and he never will, amen. My God is the most high. Amen. Thank God that he is the most high tonight. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. You can look around and see several not here. Got a few text messages. Sister Gwen's sick tonight. Remember her in prayer. Sister Trinity is sick, asking for prayer. So remember her tonight. Brother Clark is moving Sister Lambert. Give God the praise. She was able to get out of the nursing home today. So we're thankful for that. But they just... Sprung her free about the time for them to come to church. Remember Sister Clark's family in sorrow as she unexpectedly lost an uncle uh, just yesterday morning. So remember that family in prayer. Amen. And they've asked Sister Clark to bring the message. So pray that God would fill her mouth with his words. Amen. That he would uh, rightly give her the right words to say that she would rightly divide the word of God. So remember that tonight. Amen. Several others. Not here. God sees and knows. Look at the prayer list tonight. Amen. We just pray that God would come down and move in a mighty way. Amen. I met with a family today. Remember that family in prayer. God knows all the need and what is there. And God is still working. Amen. Aren't you glad God's still working? Amen. He's not done yet. Praise the Lord. My God's able. Amen. Sister Tammy and them have a housing situation. You saw that request last night. Continue to pray that God would have his way in it. God's able to do all things. I know that he is. Amen. So we're going to take all unspoken requests tonight by uplifting of the hand, knowing that God is our healer, our deliverer, our way maker. Come on, let's all go to the Lord together right now. Precious Heavenly Father. God, we come to you, Lord, right now, calling upon you, knowing, God, that you see and know every need, every circumstance, and every situation, Lord. It all belongs to you, and you, Lord, are more than able to move upon every need tonight. Lord, come down and have your will. Have your way, God. Heal the sick. Bind up the broken, God. And, oh, help us, God, to get our flesh out of the way. Allow you to move, God, as you, God, God would like to move. Oh, I pray. God, let us not disqualify ourselves from your blessing, for we have doubt, God. But oh, give us faith. Lord, give us strength, God. Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing, all that you've done already, God. And oh, how you're moving in a mighty way for lives to be changed. Oh, right now, God, we're praying, Lord, that souls would be saved, added to the kingdom of heaven. Oh, I pray, 
Move in a mighty way tonight. Lord God, let your will be done in all things, God, for all things belong to you. Lord God, I know that you see every need, spoken and unspoken tonight. The prayer list, God, oh, move in a mighty way. Let your will be done, Lord God, and have your way. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, thank the Lord. Aren't you thankful that you know who he is tonight? Aren't you thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated tonight if you want. You don't have to. Amen. We can just let God have his way tonight. Don't forget, several things coming up, several things going on. Amen. We have a baby shower coming up Saturday. All the sisters are invited for Sister Marissa, 12 o'clock on Saturday. So don't forget about that. All the sisters that can come out and be a part of that. There's a VBS meeting right after Sunday school. First VBS meeting of the year. Amen. So don't forget about that. Right after Sunday school, we'll meet in the dining hall. Amen. So uh, be in prayer that God would lead and guide and direct. We have unity prayer here on Monday night. We are the host church. Everyone, please come out for prayer. Brothers, we had a great Bible study, I feel, the other night. What a move. You could feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As God moved in that place and come out, amen, that God would just move in this prayer Monday night as well. Let's keep praying one for another. Amen. A lot of other things happening, including youth conference. Amen. The 17th and 18th. Don't forget about that. Invite people out. Amen. Many things going on. And camp. Get your applications turned in. I've gotten a few, but not, not a whole lot yet. So everybody start getting those things filled out, and let's get ready for Camp 2023 if the Lord should tarry that long. All right, let's stand tonight. Bring our tithes and offering unto the Lord. We ask you to just give as the Lord lays it up on your heart. Amen. Cross aisles and greet somebody tonight. Amen. He said it. believe God is still drawing today. Amen. We need to continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen and amen. I don't know if you've been paying attention to what is going on in the world. I, I know we get in our little cocoons and our little bubbles and we get on, amen, we, we get kind of fixated on certain things and it only takes the next big thing for us to lose our train of thought or our attention, amen. But I was seeing some things the other day, and there was people that had gathered, and some of you have seen it. Sister Kim was telling me about it, this outpouring that is going on, the things that are happening. Church, I know not everything is going to be done the way that maybe we think, the way that you think, the way that I think, but church, I believe Jesus' name is being lifted up. And I believe when Jesus' name is lifted up, truly lifted up, amen, with honest hearts, we need to rejoice in that. Isn't that right? Remember the disciples came to Jesus and said, there was some that was casting out devils in your name, and we stopped them because they weren't with us. Amen. Jesus said, if they're, if they're with us, they're not against us. Amen. Come on. I want people to be with us, don't you? I don't want people to be against us. 
I was going to wait until this Sunday, but I was in the office the other day, and a lady came in, and we got talking about church, and she told me what church that she went to. And I hadn't even told her yet anything about what we do here or anything like that. All I said was, I said, I pastor the Apostolic Pentecostal Church. And she looked at me. I didn't say we give away coats, Brother and Sister Poe. I didn't say we give away backpacks. I didn't say. She looked at me and she said, your church does a lot to help this community. I was taken aback for a moment where the church she goes to has much bigger facility than we've got, probably a bigger crowd most of the time than what we've got. I'm going to tell you something, church. Jesus' name needs to be lifted up. And I said, all these folks, and they were folks, Brother Jones, that had gathered in Times Square in New York City. And they were throwing their hands up, and they were singing unto the Lord. And then there was a video of people gathered in a stadium of some sort. I don't know where it was even. don't remember where it was. And they began to cry out the name of Jesus. This place was full of of people, amen, and they begin to cry out his name, amen. There was a video of the West Bank in Jerusalem, in Israel, and it was full of people. I mean, it was packed, packed in Israel, and they begin to call on the name of Jesus, amen. I'm going to tell you something, Jesus' name is being lifted up. We need to continue to lift up the name of the Lord. It's funny how that someone was talking here not very long ago, Brother Jeff, and they were talking about when that young man collapsed on the football field. And this man said, you know, all these people that tuned in and was at that game thought they were there to watch a football game, and they turned out to be going to a prayer meeting. And they said, millionaires on that field. When it come down to it, Sister Beth, it didn't matter how much money they had. It didn't matter what ESPN thought or what the FCC thought or rules and laws that prohibit public prayer. Those millionaires bowed on their knees and bowed their heads and began to call upon the only thing that they knew that could save that young man. See, when push comes to shove, it doesn't matter what man thinks because we serve a God, hallelujah. And that God is our only hope. And that's what I'm here to talk to us tonight about, the only hope. He's the only hope. Anybody with me tonight? Paul said, if I had hope in this life only, I'd be of all men most miserable, but we have a hope tonight. Jeremiah 17 and 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Do we want to be blessed tonight? I said, do we truly want to be blessed tonight? In my prayer just a moment ago, I said, Lord, let us not disqualify ourselves from blessing. Amen. How many knows we can disqualify ourselves? Very simply here, Jeremiah said, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Amen. If I don't trust him and I don't have that hope tonight, I have disqualified, my, disqualified myself from blessing. Amen. I don't want to miss the blessings of God. I only have one hope tonight. It's in Jesus. Things are going to fail me. Things are going to give up on me. Amen. People are going to quit me, but I've got a God tonight, amen, that I can hope in. I've got a God tonight I can trust in. I've got a God tonight that I can believe in. Amen. So many times we pray. Sister Tammy, I'll tell you, I was praying about your situation. And I began to pray. And I said, God, you're bigger than a housing situation. You're the savior of our soul. I said, you're bigger than colds and cancer. You're the creator of the body. And on and on. Sometimes we stop short of what God really wants to bless us with. 
Go back to what I spoke on Sunday morning. We need to possess the things of God. We live, Brother Kramer used to say a lot, we live below our privileges, and we do. You know why? Because we make God out of something that is flesh, and my God is not. He is eternal tonight. He is a spirit, hallelujah, that is omnipresent, omnipotent. Amen. My God is able to do what I can never do. Isn't that right? And because of that, I have a hope. So I'm thankful I've got friends, I've got brothers and sisters in this house tonight, and I know I can trust you, but you're limited tonight. I'm limited tonight. But the great thing about God is there is no limit. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. Where's your trust tonight? Where's your hope tonight? I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of people who puts their hope in the stock market, and look what happens. A lot of people puts their trust in fame, and look what happens. Do you know how many famous people tonight are in either in addiction or in rehab or somewhere in between? They kill themselves. One of the funniest men probably in this modern era of comedy that probably ever has lived was a guy by the name of... Yeah, I just lost my, what's his name? Robin Williams. Started to say the wrong Robin, and I couldn't think of the right Robin. Robin Williams killed himself. So much depression. No hope. No hope. If I had hope in this life only, I'd be of all men most miserable. When the laughter ends, where's your hope? See, they become addicted to things. It doesn't have to be drugs. They become addicted to that applause. They become addicted to that uh, adulation and those awards. And they become addicted to the contract and the big money and the fame and the fortune and, and the red carpet or whatever it might be. And when that runs out, what do they have? They have no hope. Right? Hollywood is full of, addic of addicts, addiction, addiction and addicts, people that are addicted to all kinds of things. Because they've put their trust and they've put their hope in that. It's always going to fail you. God never fails. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies. Aren't you glad for the mercy of God? It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Mm. Aren't you glad God's mercy is new every morning? That his compassion is new every morning. No wonder the Apostle Paul said that I must die daily. Amen. Take up the cross and follow him because we are flesh. Isn't that right? Oh, come on now. I guess you, I'll say Joe Riggs because I don't want you to have, I don't want to rattle off every name in here. I guess you never live. I guess that attitude of yours never comes out. I guess those things that shouldn't rise up within you never rises up within you. Mm. All it takes sometimes is to, you don't, you don't have to be, you ever just been tired and somebody asks you something and you really don't want to answer them because why? I'm tired. Right? Don't take much. Oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Why did you act that way? I don't know. I'm just tired. Boy, it's easy for our, us to forget about Sunday night when we're tired. Come on. You ever notice them kids never, they always want to hang, hang on you when you're tired and it's hot outside. You ever notice that? The rest of the time, they don't want to hug you for nothing. Let it get hot. Let them get tired. Oh, mom. Why? Get off me, right? We've all been there, I think. 
I've been on both sides of that. I've been the hangee and the hanger. I've lived that long. Now the grandkids come along, they can hang on me all they want. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, church, aren't you glad for the faithfulness of God? Aren't you? Don't you just appreciate the faithfulness of God that even when we're not, even when we fail, even when we fall, amen, great is the faithfulness of God. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Church, where's your hope tonight? Amen. Where do you, amen, lay the things of this world down at and have a hope, amen, that you can rise up a new creature? It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. There's times things happen, and I don't understand, amen, but God knows the end from the beginning, and I have to hope in him. Every day it's new, even even when I mess up, even when it looks like I'm doing all right. I saw a story of a runner, a marathoner. It's a lady from Nigeria. I wish I could say her name tonight, but I can't. And Sister Clark, she had led for almost 26 miles of this little over 26-mile race, a marathon is. And she was coming down the home stretch, and her body began to give out. And she just practically ran herself right into the ground. And down she went, face first, hands and knees sprawled out on the ground. The race was over. It looked like she was done, just a few feet from the finish line. She could see the finish line. Had led this entire, it was the Austin, Texas Marathon. And she had led almost the whole race. And she stumbled and she fell. And I thought so many times, Christians, we think that we're, we're doing so good. And I can see the finish line. I can see it. And all at once, something will trip us up. And we'll just lay there and die. But see, God's, God's mercy, amen, they're new every morning. His compassions are new every morning. I'm not saying it's okay to fall. I think we should do everything to keep from falling. But if you do, don't lay there and die. This woman got to her hands and knees. They come up behind her with a wheelchair, wanting to put her in the wheelchair. I got to finish the race. And she began to crawl. As best she could. Matter of fact, Sister Angie, when the race was over and they got some fluids in her and they asked her, she couldn't remember from the time she fell to the time it was over. She couldn't remember what had happened. Her body had shut down that much. But she knew enough of this, Sister Kim. She knew her by instinct, I've got to get to the finish line. And she got on her hands and knees. That's all she could do. And she began to crawl. I saw a young lady, they didn't say much about it, but I saw a young lady come around the corner and passed her. And then another one come around the corner and passed her. They finally got her to her feet just a few steps from the finish line and barely holding on to her arms, she made it across that finish line and she still got third place. But what struck me was what the commentator said he said that it was the image of defeat that became the epitome of victory. The man that was the host or the main guy running this marathon said that she was the focus or the catalyst of the whole weekend was her determination 
basically to make it to the end. It did not matter that she fell. It did not matter that people wanted to stop her and think they were helping her. If they had helped her the way that they wanted to help her, she would have been disqualified, and it would have been over. Don't let anybody disqualify you from the blessings of God. You have a hope tonight. Come on, you have a hope tonight. And there's people that will think, well, let me just help you. Amen. You let Jesus help you tonight. Amen. He'll make sure you get across that line. She got up and finished that race, and it just struck my heart. Amen. That this woman wouldn't let anything keep her from this natural victory. It was just, you know, I don't know what she was going to win. I don't know. I know they make some money running. Matter of fact, it struck this man's heart so much, Sister Dolores, that she finished that race that the guy that was the, the, the organizer of the event, he increased her pay because she finished the race. Come on. That's in the natural. You see, the Bible says that we've got a crown and a robe of righteousness, amen, when we make it to the other side. I don't know about you. I want to make it to heaven, and, and we make it in. That's good. I don't want to get there and just have one little stone in my crown. I don't want to have just one little jewel walking around all embarrassed because I ain't got hardly anything. Come on, church. We got to run this race, amen, the best that we can. Do the things that reach the loss tonight and let them know that that hope that you have is something that they can have as well. Amen. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, or the second chapter. Go to the fifth verse. This world's finding out that he's the only hope. That's what's going on. I don't know if you've been paying attention to what's going on in the secular world right now, but they're not hiding Satanism any longer. There was some... And some of these young people, I hope they don't even know who it was, but I'm sure their friends have told them. I don't know the names of these people hardly anymore. There was some guy that showed up, I guess, and performed at the Grammys the other night, dressed up like what you would think Satan would look like. He had on a red suit. Did you guys see this image? Yeah, it's been floating around. He showed up glorifying Satan. But it's not just those people. There's people that are heads of economics that are wearing pentagrams and upside-down crosses and all sorts of things that they used to hide. Now they're wearing them as lapel pins and letting everybody know, amen, how they feel about Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. Every knee is going to bow because Jesus is the only hope. Jesus is the only hope. And this world's finding that out. And the more they try to push it down, I believe this, this outpouring of people turning to the Lord. Amen. I believe we're gonna, I believe that we're seeing things happening right now. How many, how many has heard about the end time your whole life? But have you seen it all coming together the way that's coming together right now? An outpouring at the same time people are falling away. At the same time, how many earthquakes have we had in the last few weeks? Tornadic. Look at the, I, I know, people say, well, that's happened before. But I'm going to tell you something. There is something going on right now. There's something going on in apostolic churches. You think the services that we've been having, we're the only ones? We're not. Because you start listening to other pastors and other people, and they start telling about their services. And guess what? My God doesn't just move in Greenfield. He can move anywhere. I don't care if it's Jews on the West Bank by the wailing wall crying out, Jesus! Guess what? God hears that. My. We need to lift up that name. We need to let this world know because I'm telling you something. Without it, they don't have any hope. They don't have any hope. Jesus is the only hope. Brother Chris, I don't believe it's just going to be one here or there. I believe we're seeing people. Uh, there's a young man. I can't remember. His last name is Fish. I don't know where he's from, but he went down to that Asbury revival, and I don't think he's the only one. He was in the line. He was outside. 
He wasn't even in the building. He was outside. There were so many people in line trying to get into this tabernacle. And he was out there laying hands. He was preaching the word, laying hands on people being filled with the Holy Ghost in that line, speaking in other tongues. Then they were taking them to the motel and baptizing them in Jesus' name in the swimming pool. Come on now. Thank God. Thank God. Woo. Thank God. Hallelujah. Church, we're living in an exciting time. They can dress up like the devil all they want. I've got a God that's still the only hope. They can wear their pentagrams all they want. I've got a God that's the only hope. Amen. My God's bigger than their God. Don't think they don't have a God. They've got a God. But what did Brother Brown say, Kim? But God's got their God on a choker chain, saying, that's, all, that's enough, old boy. You can only go so far because God holds the keys to where he lives. Sister Tammy, you talk about a housing situation. He don't own where he lives. God owns where he lives. And one day he's going to cast him into that bottomless pit. And I'm going to tell you something. They can play around with him all they want, but they're going to find out hell's not a party. And there's no hope in hell. There's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. But there ain't going to be no party. Even when we were dead in sins, I know we usually start at one and we all get excited about four, but I wanted to pass four so we didn't get stuck on it tonight. When we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace, ye are saved. How many is glad you've been made alive tonight? Hath raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved. Through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. What a mighty God we serve. What a gift, amen, that he was willing to give us. Hallelujah. Amen. Didn't deserve it, but he loves us that much. Remember, they're new every day. Those mercies, those compassions of God, they're new every day. And that gift of God, how many knows it's still real tonight? Not of works, lest any man should boast. We can't work our way into heaven. Amen. But it's the gift of God, that salvation, amen, that God pours out upon us. Amen. Yes, there's works to be done, but works alone is not going to do it. Isn't that right? For we are his workmanship. There's work to be done. And he is the one that it says, for we are his workmanship created. In Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Who are these promises to? Who is this hope for? Amen. For those, amen, that will walk in the, in the, in the commandments of God, that we will put on the attributes of God. Amen. We have a hope tonight. Hallelujah. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, somebody say no hope, and without God in the world. So you know what it's talking about here. The Jews said the Gentiles didn't, have a place with God. That's what it's talking about. You know that even after the Holy Ghost fell on Cornelius and his household, Peter said, how can we deny to baptize them when Jesus has filled them with the Holy, they've received the Holy Ghost, how can we not baptize them? And they did. But after that, Peter went back and they began to berate him for being in the house. They weren't even supposed to be in the house of a Gentile. But it was Jesus himself that said, Peter, what I've made, don't call it unclean. Go with them. Don't be fearful. I've sent them. Come on, church. 
So here it was that those of one group was saying another group doesn't deserve it. No hope, it says, having no hope and without God in the world. And we can look down our nose at the Jews or hear the, those of the circumcision and how they treated the Gentiles. And you know how I feel. Now, don't, don't go out of here saying Brother Riggs has lost his mind and lost his salvation. Not at all. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something. We've got to allow God to save people. They're not automatic, their hair is not automatically going to grow out of their head. That's just not going to happen. We got to let God save them. Show them what's right. Preach what's right. Live what's right. Do what's right. But allow God to save them. I can't save them. I can pray with them. I can be friends with them. I better live it in front of them. But only Jesus can save them. And if I kill them while God's trying to save them, their blood's going to be on my hands. So don't look down your nose at them because there's a lot of times we're not careful. We talked a little bit about this Monday night. Amen. How that people, we would be so hard at times. And, you know, there's some groups, you know, we, we can forgive this. We can forgive a liar because, you know, they just lied a little bit, but they're okay. We can forgive, you know, somebody that we like that was addicted to this because, you know, he's a good old boy and, and we, we know how he is when he's, when, but, but now that's okay because we will forgive him when he comes to the Lord. But there's certain people, oh, I tell you what, I don't know if God, I'm going to tell you something, my God can forgive anything and save anybody. I know that to be true, don't you? God can save. God can save. God can bring them out of that lifestyle. God can bring them out of that addiction. Amen. Mm. There's alcoholics that are some of the biggest preachers now that they came out of alcoholism, and now they're some of the biggest and best preachers that this apostolic movement has ever had. That's just the truth. I got news for you. There's prostitutes sitting in, former prostitutes sitting in apostolic churches and maybe even on the praise team. And God's brought them out of that lifestyle. Come on. God has saved homosexuals. Yes, he has. And brought him out of that lifestyle. Amen. God's even saved lukewarm Christians that sit on a pew every Sunday and didn't make a move for God until one day God pricked their heart and they came to an altar and gave, you know what, that's just a sin as much as... I don't want to sit on a pew and split hell wide open. Matter of fact, oh my. Brother Tim Bailey and I was talking a while ago and we were talking about the Ark of the Covenant and how the does have put his hand on it to steady it. But you know, Brother Jones, it should have never been on that Ark. But because David had saw the Philistines do that, he thought, well, we'll just do it that way. We can't do it like the world. We're not the world. See, they got away. They, do you realize they opened the Ark? They put things in the Ark. They looked in the Ark and they didn't die because they looked in the Ark like Uzzah did when he touched it. There's something about being ignorant and sinning and willfully sinning. I don't want to willfully sit, sit on a pew, hear the message all the time, and then split hell wide open because I know better. I know what it takes to be saved. Not everybody out there knows what it takes to be saved. Some of them are doing all they know to do. And what they're waiting on is somebody to come by and share with them the good news. They're not waiting on somebody to come by and tell them they're going to hell because they don't. Come on, that don't work, folks. That don't work. You let God tell them. You love them. You live it in front of them. Amen. And when God does it, he'll do it right. I don't want him just to do it because Joe Riggs says to do it. What good is that going to do? When I'm not around, they're going to do what they want to do anyway. It's just the truth. 
They get mad at me, they're going to go right back to doing what they were doing before. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm not with them. They're going to go back to doing what they did. But when, they, when Jesus saves them, when he makes them a new creature, amen. No hope, it said. They were with no hope without God in this world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye, ye who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Amen. There's some people in here tonight. Amen. I say some people because all people in here tonight. We were far from the things of God. Amen. But God gave us some hope. Hallelujah. I don't know about you tonight, but oh, that excites me because I know where I could be tonight. I know what I could be into tonight. But you see, there's a hope, amen, not just in the world to come, but there's a hope right now. Jesus. Jesus. The old song we used to sing says, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. He's the only hope. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have ex, uh, access by one Spirit unto the Father. I don't know about you, but it is wonderful when you're talking to someone, and all at once the light switch goes on, the light bulb goes on, and they see something that they've never seen before. Someone of another faith. And you begin to talk about the oneness of God. Sister Blanche, I was talking to a young lady at work one day. And she was telling me where she went to church and this, that, and the other. And I began to tell her about the oneness of God. We began to talk about the Trinity. She said... You mean there's people that believes in three God? Now, she's going to a Trinitarian church. She said, you mean they believe? And I said, that's it. She goes, I don't believe there's three gods. I said, then you're not a Trinitarian. And the expression on her face, come on, church. When God begins to break down that wall, now, Sister Kim, how, how would I have ever won her if I walked in and said, you know, because you believe in three gods, God doesn't love you. You talk about building a wall, but let God tear it down. Let God break it down. Amen. Hmm. Only God can destroy it. I've seen some of you loving on some of these people when they come in. Pam Kramer, I've seen you hug more necks in the last few weeks, the last couple of months. And I tell you what, you don't know that I see it, but it just tickles me to death every time I see it. Because I'm going to tell you something, that love is going to change lives. And the things that we don't think, the things that we don't think people are even seeing, it happened today and I can't go into it, but things that you don't think people are seeing, I'm going to tell you something, if you do it for God, it's going to be known. And I'm going to tell you something else. If you, say you're, if you say you're of God and you're not doing the things of God, that's going to be known too. Live for God. Trust in God. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. That song we sing, I'm a citizen of heaven, right? You ever think about that? I love that line in that song because I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not, this world's not my home. 
Oh, we can sing that old song, this world's not my home, I'm just a passing through. That new song says the same thing, only it says, I'm a citizen of heaven. Come on, I'm just a pilgrim down here, amen. I've been made a citizen of heaven. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. Church, we got to keep reaching for people. We got to keep showing them the love of God. We got to keep showing them that the only hope that they can ever have is in God. Somebody said the other day, and I believe this to be true, I think it was Brother Jason McGar said, apostolic is not a denomination. Apostolic is a doctrine, and he is right. This is a doctrine. We need to share this doctrine with the world. And part of that doctrine, have you ever realized that everywhere Jesus went, I know he threw the money changers out, but that's because they were corrupting the house of God and they were supposed to be the people of God. What did I tell you a moment ago about being a lukewarm Christian sitting on the pew? But you never seen him turn away a publican. You never seen him turn away the adulterous woman, did you? Those possessed, those that were down and out. Are we Christ like tonight? We need to share with them. We need to tell them. We need to encourage them. Amen. I'm glad I didn't have to go through a lot of the things that people have to go through. But even in not going through those things, I had to know where salvation was. I had to know, amen, who Jesus was, who he is. I only find it to be sweeter, don't you? I only find him to be sweeter. Titus 3 says this. Chapter 3, verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. No, not us. Disobedient. Surely not. Deceived. Serving divers' lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Not any of us. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm a new creature tonight. Are you a new creature? Behold, all things are passed away. All things become new. I'm a new creature tonight. How? Just because I put on a different set of clothes? No, that doesn't make me a new creature. It says he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. There's only one hope tonight. There's only one hope of getting out of here. Being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The devil will promise a lot of people a lot of things. He'll try to tell you a lot of things. And it's easy to follow after him if you're not careful. 
I said it a moment ago in kind of a joking way. It doesn't take much for us to forget about that move of God. Just be a little tired. Be a little hangry. All right? And that flesh will rise up. That flesh that the Bible says is the enemy of the spirit. It's easy to live for the enemy because, you see, we're flesh. We were created with these fleshly desires and these fleshly attributes. But when we put on the things of God, that thing that changes us, that thing that makes us into what God always intended for us to be, See, we were intended to live in the garden. We were intended to live in paradise. We were intended, it was supposed to be. Amen. But something happened. And sin got between man and God. And God had to make a way to make us new once again. That hope. Jesus, the only hope. As this world is crying out that name, I hope, I pray, I don't want, I pray that they know why they're calling out that name. I don't want it to be a fad. I don't want it to just be something that people are doing. That's why I say we have to truly lift up the name of Jesus. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Are we an heir of the things of God tonight? Are we holding on to that hope of eternal life? Amen. That God has blessed us with, that God has showed us, amen, as that, as that runner just out of pure instinct. As I said, she didn't remember anything, but she knew enough to get to her hands and her knees and to do everything she could to fight her way to the finish line. Don't stop now. Don't give up now. God's on his way back. It's no time to stop. Parents, live for God with all of your heart. I think it was Brother Carpenter that preached a message about what was going to be worse than hell. He said, you know what's going to be worse than hell? And he began to describe what he said, hell is going to be a bottomless pit, so you're going to be in a free fall. You ever thought about that? It really hit me when he said that. It's a bottomless pit, so you're going to be falling. I don't know about you. I don't like that feeling. You ever be laying all at once? What happened? I thought I was falling off the bed, and I was. It's even worse in the classroom, right, young people? Lay your head down all at once, and everybody in the room is looking at you. He said, you're going to be in a free fall. He said, the flames are going to be lapping up all around you. He said, you'll hear the demons hissing as you fall past them. People in outer darkness gnashing upon you with their teeth. He said, you know what's going to be worse than that? It's when your child comes by you and comes up next to you and says, Dad, why didn't you lead us in the house of God? Mom, why did you get your feelings hurt and walk away from the house of God? He said, that's going to be worse than hell. Parents, lead these children, lead these young people, amen, and make sure that they remain a child of God. Pray for them, elders. Come on, pray for one another. Because Jesus told Peter that the enemy desired to sift him as wheat. But Jesus said, I prayed for you. Are we Christ-like tonight? You've fought through the battles. You've went through what these young people are going through. Maybe a different time. Maybe a different era. Maybe a little bit different of what they're facing than what you faced. But really, when it comes down to it, it's really not that different. You face being ridiculed because you were a Christian. Guess what? They're facing some of those same things. The kids that wanted to go out and party... Maybe the parties were a little different. Maybe they weren't quite as much. But I'm going to tell you something. There's been sin for a long time. 
I said it not very long ago. You think Hollywood is just a mess now? Go back and look. Silent movie actresses in their early and mid-20s married three or four times and died of alcohol poisoning or some kind of addiction. You can read about them over and over. That's not new. This isn't new. I remember Sister Sherry telling the young people, she said, you think it's hard now? She said, when... When I was a young person, she said, I had to make my own clothes because the miniskirt was so popular. They didn't make dresses hardly long enough for, right, Sister Sherry, didn't you tell me that? Tell the kids that? This ain't new. So you've been where they are. Pray for them. Pray for them. Young people, you think they don't know what they're talking about? Pray for them. You're going to find out. They know a little bit. But instead of rebelling, instead of getting an attitude, I was telling somebody today, I said, I love our church because our young people love our elders and our elders love our young people. I've seen you pray together. I've seen you pray for one another. I've seen young people praying for elders. I remember Brother Bruner saying one time many, many years ago, he said, if I want God to move on me, I'm going to have those young people pray for me. I'm glad the Holy Ghost is still the same. I'm glad the hope is still the same. God hasn't changed, and he's not going to change. He's coming after a people. He's coming after a people. And the people he's coming after are people with hope. I got hope tonight. I got hope tonight. I want this world to know. That there's a hope. It's not just at Asbury. It's not just in Greenfield. It's not just at camp. It lies in a relationship with Jesus. It's not just a Sunday morning thing. It's not just a Christmas and Easter thing. It's a daily walk that I have with him. That no matter what I face, those mercies... And that compassion is new every morning. Every day when I wake up, Jesus is there. And I make the choice whether or not I live in hope or I live in despair. Because he already has it. He's already made a way. So we have to choose tonight. Choose hope. Choose hope. Choose the things of God. Choose the blessings of God. And hold on to eternal life because I'm going to tell you something. Eternal death is not going to be any fun. And all these people in the world that are trying to pull people away, trying to deceive them, they're going to find out one day that this thing they thought was going to be so fun and going to be so cool, we'll just all get to hell and then we'll really have a party. It ain't going to be no party. But you have a chance tonight, not just for you, for those around you, those that you work with, those that you live next to, those that you come in contact with, that one at the grocery store, that family that you see that's in need, that rich family in town, come on, they need to know there's a hope. What's his name? What's his name? Amen. Let's stand tonight. The hope of God. Amen. Don't forget now about everything happening. Baby shower Saturday at noon. VBS meeting right after uh, Sunday school. Amen. Next Wednesday night is Youth Alive. So don't forget about that. And, of course, prayer meeting on Monday night. A lot of stuff coming up before we get to youth conference on the 17th and 18th. Amen. Big month, the month of March. So everyone be in prayer for what God has for us. Praise the Lord. Thankful for each one that is here tonight. Brother Nate, dismiss us in a word of prayer, brother. Amen and amen. Shake hands and be friendly tonight. Invite somebody out to the house of the Lord now.